The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. In the year 2000, Ben Heckendorn built his first mod. We can rebuild it. Smaller. Better. Portable. Since then, he has continued his work, helping those in need with creative new projects. If you've got an idea you'd like to see built, why not send it to The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. On today's episode, we're going to be looking at the new Google ADK. The ADK, or Accessory Development Kit, is a system that allows your Android phone to control things in the outside world through an Arduino-based board. I'll show you how to get started with the Google ADK, installing the software on your computer and how to upload it to your phone. And also we'll think of some applications along the way that we can use it for, some cool stuff we can build on the show. Also, I'd like to thank Thomas Haynes at Google for sending us the development unit to check out. So here is the Android Google branded Arduino platform. Um, it's basically the same as uh, Arduino AT Mega. It has all the same I.O. but um, has a um, uh, different controller for the USB, so you can actually do USB uh, communications with your device instead of actually USB to RS-232 serial, as they typically do. So another thing they send with this is the demo kit board. This allows you to easily check out the functionality of it, and it's a shield, you just squeeze it on. It's got some servo controllers, relays, a joystick, some RGB LEDs. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you the steps you need in order to get the um, Android development on your computer and also how to send the code to this so we can get this talking to an Android phone. Now there are several components software wise that we're going to need to do this. The first is the Android SDK, the software development kit. And we'll install that on the computer as its own module. And you can pretty much put it wherever you want. But the important thing is just installing the kit isn't enough. We have to go into the kit and install the modules you need, such as Google APIs and the Android and development environment itself. The other thing that we need is a program called Eclipse. And this is a kind of a general purpose um, software development program. You can download it for free from Eclipse's website. And the one we're going to use is Eclipse Classic 3.7. You're also going to need the Arduino development environment, which you can get at arduino.cc. And again, it's free. Um, you've seen us use Arduino before. Uh, basically, you program this microcontroller the same way you program any other microcontroller. And finally, you'll need the Java development kit as well, the JDK. Just having the Java runtime environment, which your computer probably has, isn't enough. We're going to start with the Android SDK. Now you don't actually install like a normal program, you know, you run an executable and it installs itself on the computer. You actually just take the entire folder and put it someplace that you want it. In this case, I've put it in my program files, x86. I've actually noticed them. this doesn't actually work necessarily that well with 64-bit. And then we have Android SDK, and then there's something in there called SDK Manager, and that's what you actually need to run to update your packages. And in my case, since I put it on program files, I'm going to have to run it as administrator so it has the proper permissions to create folders in its subdirectory. Okay, it comes up here. And basically, it'll sit here and it'll look to see if you need your packages updated. When you run it for the first time, it's going to want to do a bunch of updates. And uh, look, it's got one for me right here. Sure, I'll install that. These packages are kind of large, I noticed. Uh, when I tried to download them with DSL, it took a long, long time, so keep that in mind. And uh, you can also set up virtual Android devices here. If you see on the screen, I've got a couple. I've got fake droid and uh, super fake droid, and they're both uh, Android 233. 3. So you can actually run your emulated code in the, you can run your code in the emulated Android, or you can deploy it directly to your phone. Um, I've already got these installed, but basically what you do is you go to available packages, and then you want to install the SDK platform for your version of phone. In this case, we're going to be using a 233 phone. And then you also want to get under third-party add-ons. I don't know why Google is called a third-party for Android, but you're also gonna want Google APIs, and then for our phone, it's going to be revision uh, API 10, revision two. Then if, you want, if you're using something newer, like if you have a, a Motorola Zoom, you'd want the newest one, like API 12. So once you've got those all installed, your SDK is ready to roll, so your external program can use it to compile, which is what we're going to do now. Once the Android SDK is on your computer, you're ready to install Eclipse. It's the same thing, you actually don't install it, you just put the directory someplace. So you download it from here, and then you unzip the files and you put them wherever you want. In this case, I've put an Eclipse folder in my program files x86 again. 
the complete instructions are on Google's website, but basically what you do in Eclipse is you install a plugin for Android development. And you do that by going down to install new software, and then you put a path right here to the um, file repository online, and it'll install the plugin for you. We've already done that, so we can move on to the next section. The next thing we're going to do is get the software on this Arduino board. So on the ADK website, you can download the, um, the C files that you'll use with the Arduino. I've already got those, so I'm going to load them up in good old Arduino thing. Lovely program. Uh, let's see, and it's going to be under software installs. This is the folder you'll get. You'll get ADK release 5.1.12, and this actually has the Arduino files and the compilation files to make your Android application. So what we want is firmware. That's what's going to go on the demo kit, the board on the Arduino. You want demo kit, demo kit PDE, which is a Arduino project. Okay, let's see if it'll upload. We have the code on the Arduino ready to go. So now we need to get the code on the phone. There's a few things we have to set up on the Android phone before we can deploy to it. We go into settings and then applications. We want to allow unknown sources because my computer is going to be considered an unknown source. Then under development, we want to allow USB debugging, which will let us put the code on the phone in the first place. All right, the phone's hooked up and the project's compiled, so now we can try to run it. We're going to go up here to the run icon and we're going to go run as Android application. And it's going to let us pick. We could either do it in a virtual Android on our computer, but we're going to send it right to the phone. So choose a running Android device and now it's on the phone. All right, and now we're in the demo kit. So there's a few things we can do here. This is the input screen, so you can move the joystick around. I can push the button, I can push these buttons, I can push the Android. And then on out, I can make these LEDs light up. Whee! And also run some servos. Are you an engineer? Do you like getting your hands on the latest technology? Do you like free stuff? Then you should head over to the Element 14 site so you can check out the road test program, where they'll send you free products in exchange for your feedback. Here's how it works. Start by visiting element14.com to log in or register for free. You can also access road tests at any time by visiting element14.com forward slash road test. Here you'll find information on all the current products available to their road testers in a simple enrollment form. And be sure to tell them why you'd be a great road tester for that product. You can enroll in as many road tests as you like. There's no limit to the number of products you can test. If you're selected to be a tester, your free products will be shipped right to your door. The new equipment is 100% yours to keep. No contracts, returns, or purchases necessary. After you've become an expert with your new e-gear, head back to the element14.com community and let everyone know what you think. Sounds like a sweet deal to me. Go to element14.com forward slash road test to enroll today. Now, back to the show. So far, we've learned that we can connect an Arduino to an Android phone. So I'm going to think about the advantages of each and then we'll think of good ways for them to play off each other. Arduino, you know, one thing you can do is servo control. You can control all sorts of stuff. You've seen it on the show. We've used Arduinos to control pinball machines, stepper motors, pretty much any sort of real world application you can think of. Then that demo board, of course, it had a joystick or advanced input. Um, you know, I know that they have things for iPhone. For Android, there's a lot less accessories. So maybe like some sort of joystick input or an externalized game controller, you know, beyond what you can do with your phone itself. You have a temperature sensor. I don't know how useful that would be. And some phones probably actually even have one, but whatever. Um, this one might be good. External high power devices. Uh, you've seen us before use microcontrollers to fire solenoids on pinball machines. Those are very high power. So, you know, the little wimpy phone could power some beefy stuff through the Arduino. Uh, lots of I.O. Um, you know, the Arduino usually has like at least 50 I.O. And then we had the digital and chip kit, which had 80 some. So, you know, you got your one little USB port. Can't do a whole lot, but you could port it out to a whole bunch of different I.O. Quite a bit, probably more than you need. And the basic thing to think about is your Android phone just kind of sits there. It's a, it's a program, it's software. The Arduino can do real world control. Let's see, where can we use these things? Uh, the motion sensing could be used to log data and drive servos. So this could detect motion and then this could represent it or recreate the motion, like a motion simulator. Uh, let's see, where can we go with this? Um, I think we'll, we'll think about this in terms of input-output flow. Um, the Android is telling the Arduino to do things and maybe the Arduino is sending some information back. So we already talked about motion sensing, driving some sort of servo thing. The joystick advanced input obviously comes back to the Android. Temperature would go back to the Android. Powering high power devices, that'd be the Android powering it. Lots of I.O. This is kind of both ways. This could, 
you know, use a lot of pins as outputs. This could also use the pins as inputs to do some sort of, I don't know, mass detection or something or detect quite a few inputs. Real world control again, that's basically this way. So it looks like, I wouldn't say it's quite 50-50, but my basic thought is we're gonna use the brains of the Android to make this do something in the real world. Uh, oh, an email. Oh, it's a show idea. I've always heard that babies sleep better in the car. Now that I have a three month old, I'm coming to appreciate that phenomenon. My idea is to have a baby seat sitting on top of the device that simulates the random jiggling of the road. There need to be two mechanisms, one for controlling the swain, left or right, and second to control the road bumps. Hmm, an Android phone, like this one in my hand, it could sense the motion of a car, and then with the 80K, we could re-simulate it with a motion simulator. This could be an idea. Now that we have a project in mind, we can actually nail down how the Android Arduino Synergy will work. Let's see here. Motion sensing. We can put the Android phone in a car, drive around, and use the accelerometer to log the data so we can see what motion we're gonna have. So the motion sensing of the Android will then be used to drive the servos to simulate the car motion at home in a little rocker that we make. What we do is we're gonna have to write an app for Android that does motion sensing and then it also logs the data. It goes into the mass storage. Then we'll have another program that we use a touch screen as a, uh, U, a UI in order to drive this thing. The mass storage will be used as a basis for how to do the servo. So we're actually going this way. Sense motion, store data, user interface program, drive servos, and then your baby is rocked to sleep. This is the baby. He's got like a pacifier in its mouth. Okay, well, these modern phones can detect all sorts of motion, but it sounds like he's thinking about rotational motion, such as the car, you know, turning and whatnot. Then also bumps, which would probably be inclination. So I think what I'll do is I'll have my friend Chris Kraft, who's a programmer, make an Android app that will detect those motions and log them, and then using the ADK, the phone can drive physical hardware to simulate that in a non-car static home environment. All right, we're going for a ride now, phone. I don't want to hear any fussing, and if you're good, we'll get ice cream. Phone's bolted in, so now I'm gonna drive around and collect some data. Oh no, my mysterious automatic seatbelt! Oh, there we go, that wasn't so bad. Now that we've got the data, we can start designing a rocker that will use it. So we'll start with a foam core mock-up. So before we even try to make a full-size auto car seat rocker, I'm going to make a small model of it using these servo motors that came with the Google ADK. These aren't really powerful enough for the main, the main size thing, but we can try a little demo model out here. So we've hooked up the ADK demo shield and it has some servos built into it right here. One, two, three. So we just have one servo hooked up. So we should be able to use this slider here to move our little fake car seat. Okay, so again, um, this servo is not continuous. So zero or 90 degrees in the center and then you go left or right from there. So yeah, just imagine a program doing this instead of my thumb, but. Talk about baby in the treetop. Okay, so our data showed the way the car typically moves, so we needed the data to draw out of our design. And there'll be a uh, servo here, sideways, like this one. And then this will be the inclination rocker. And then the main platform would have our other servo. So then we would also need to think about how to do it in a rotational sense, so from the top down. Now that I have a plan of attack sketched up for the baby rocker, I just need to draw it into the computer, make the actual platform, then of course find a baby seat to put on it. <gasps> it's a miracle! This looks like a job for my assistant, Allison. <laughs> ah. Thank you, Allison. That 
that's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, I'll be taking on Darren of Hack 5 in the LAN Computer Chase Challenge Battle to the Death Royale Part 1. We'll also be looking at the completed Baby Rocker project from this episode. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.